right, good morning, Image Church. I hope you've had an incredible week spending time with family. But now we're going to just come together. We're going to worship our Heavenly Father together. Come on, what do you say? I just want to hear you guys sing, dance, whatever you feel comfortable with. I just encourage you to do that. Let's praise our Father together. Come on. Now I'm set apart. You want more than the words could say. I'm pressing on to amazing grace. I'll follow you, Lord, for all my days. I'm following your ways. I'm going straight in your saving grace. Cause you are, you are, you are.
and sing it out. Free at last. Realized he has ransomed his grace runs While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died
Would you just take a few minutes to just worship him in your own sound, with your own voice, your own words?
satisfaction you can get knowing no matter what you've gone through no matter what you'll go through you are loved you are loved you are loved man that's the God I worship that's the one I sing to in my nonsense in my garbage and in, in my shortcomings when I fail you never stop loving me you never stop giving me another chance I failed again and you gave me another chance I failed again and you gave me yet another chance that's the love of our Jesus, and he loves you this morning so much that the creator of the universe would send his own son to die for his creation because he loved you so much. So we just thank you for giving everything for us, and we praise and we worship you, and that's the God that we give our life for, the one who would give us life for us thank you Jesus we got some cool praise requests I wanted to read together with you guys if we can pop that on the screen praising God for our church family that supported us through a difficult time of poor health and limited income we feel blessed to be part of this community and can't wait to see what the new year will bring man isn't it beautiful how God works he'll work in somebody to bless somebody else so so amazing a few days ago I watched a sermon about sowing a seed into someone's life and seeing the blessings that come from it I decided to test this and sow a small seed a few days later I received a Christmas card from my boss that included a thousand dollars come on God will surprise you like that too <laughs> praising him because in this moment I saw the faithfulness of God that's our God. He blessed me even when I was just testing him with my little faith. Hey, that's all it takes sometimes, a little bit of faith. 
Man, and, and that opens up the heart of God. He responds to your faith. So you might not have the greatest faith, but he'll respond to what faith you have. Will you have some faith this morning? Come on. And we want to pray together. There's people that have needs, and maybe God wants you to be the answer to somebody's prayer and the answer to somebody's need. So can we just be obedient as we, as we worship and as we give God praise and glory and we ask for things? Can we also say, Lord, how can I be a blessing for somebody else? How can I be an answer to somebody's prayer? So we're just going to pray through these. And if there's anything else, we're going to agree together as a church body that God is going to come through for you in a miraculous way. So God, we even come together right now. We're just praying for this list. If you guys want to just stretch your hands towards this or uh, towards this list, we're just going to agree together. Father, we thank you for the dad that is being healed of all back, neck, and head problems. I thank you, God, that this already been done, the healing's taken place. God, and I thank you that his body will manifest it now in Jesus' name. God, we are praying for favor over new positions at work, Lord. For this situation and anyone else in here who's looking for favor in a new position at work, God, we thank you that you come through in the right moment. Lord, we are praying that you pave a way for a wife and a husband to go back to school. Lord, I thank you that you come through, even, Lord, in every area of our lives, whether that's our education, that's what we're praying for right now. We thank you you'd bring the finances, Father God, to make that possible in Jesus' name. And we're praying for healing over a broken toe. God, we thank you nothing is too big for you, nothing is too silly for you. Lord, we thank you that that toe is being healed even now in Jesus' mighty name. And we're praying for financial provision. Father God, over the person who posted this request and over all the people here, we are praying for your provision. We thank you that you are our God and you always have our back and you always provide. Let us remember to give you the glory in advance and then see that miracle come through. Let us remember that blessing doesn't just come to raise our standard of living, but blessing comes to raise our standard of giving. Lord, so I pray that we would learn to sow, we would learn to give, and that's when all heaven breaks loose and blessing just pours out over your people. We love you so much, Jesus, for hearing your children and answering their prayers. We give you praise and we honor you. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody give him a shout of praise. Come on, come on. All right, all right, my friends, let's take a seat. So good to see you, everyone. Thank you, worship band. Wow, Sarah's up, two other people, everybody else is like still, what is happening? So good to see you. I know this is the last Sunday of the year. And come on, put your hands together. If anything, you are still alive and that's a good thing. You know what I'm saying? So just pat yourself in the back and say, hey, I'm still breathing. God is good. God is good. God is good. I don't know how you can come to a church gathering and still be so Relax. I, I, I don't understand. I'm going to start pouring water on you in a minute. I can't be too close. We have to social distance, but there's no rule that I cannot pour water on you. So if you're quiet, I mean, things will happen. You know what I'm saying? I can't see anybody. The light is shining here, you know, and it's just especially from this angle showing my um, couple of, you know, pandemic, uh, oh, uh, anyway, blessings. But God is good. I can't see you, so I'm just going to be guessing that people are everywhere. Um, and that's a good thing. All right. So, with, you know, before we go into the message... Uh, and, and it's a short, straight to the point, I believe God has given me a message for the church, for all of us today. Um, I want to just actually ask few of you, just randomly, I like random things, you know why? Because randomly, people will actually tell you the truth. I do not like preparation, I don't like staging, I don't like anything fake, phony, I don't like anything pretending, I just like spontaneous, honest, top of your head. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask few people right now. I don't even know how to use mask with this mic, but I'll try it. Okay. Whoa, you can still hear me. That's a good thing. I want to ask a few people uh, with a mask honoring you. 
in three words or less, how could you define 2020? Three words or less. If you're in my, con in my connect group, you know that this is what we've been training for a few years. Three words or less, now we're on a level of one word answer. And so that's a good thing. All right, so I'm going to spare those that are uh, front seating. So uh, let's go. I'm going to have Sandra, three words or less. How would you define 2020 for you? Wait, wait, wait a second. Can I turn it on? Yes. I learned to trust God, um, praying more, asking the Holy Spirit to just lead me because I didn't even know what to expect. It was just like you wake None up. None of us were. Okay. Keep, keep, come on. Can I give you a high five? Is it okay? Because you, uh, you don't wear a mask, so I hope that you, you know, it's okay that I'm uh, giving you a high five. Okay. All right. Let me ask um, Ben. Ben, three words or less. Full of opportunity. Full of opportunity. Wow. What a year. Lindsay? Last words contracted. Jesus still shows up. Jesus still shows up. I love it. Albina? Year of breakthrough. Year of breakthrough. All right. We have a group of people from Texas. Come on. We're going to ask them to put your hands together. We love these people. They have family forever. I'm going to, who's the most outspoken of the uh, Texans? Everybody's pointing to Alessia. Alessia, uh, 2020, how would you define it? Best year ever. Best year ever. Wow. I love it. Thank you. Amazing. You know, we have a gentleman among us who always talks. You can't stop Gene talking. I mean, this guy talks nonstop. Thank you, guys. I like the light. Gene, how would you define this year? It's finally over. It's finally over. Put your hands together. I'm telling you, he's a bright guy. Girls, he is still available. This gent is still available. He's loaded. I'm saying with cash. I mean, I'm just saying. I don't know. Did I say it right? I don't know. So, girls, if I would be, I'd be like, hey, digits. Anyway, all right. So, <laughs> let me go on this side a little bit. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask Alexis. Alexis, 2020, how would you define it? Um, transitional growth, challenging. Transitional growth, challenging. Oh, very good. I love it. Oof, such a great answer. Okay, Margarita? Taught me to be flexible. I, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear it. Taught me to be flexible. Taught me to be flexible. So good. All right. I'm sure that we all have, thank you. Can we keep the light on? This is so much better. I can see you guys. This is amazing. You know, we're paying a high price. And I'm going to go up in a sec because I want to take off my mask. Uh, and I don't want to be too close. But um, as a church, as you know it, we are paying an incredibly high price to be in this building, financially. But we would do anything and more just to be together. Amen? Amen. And so just so good to see you all. And I want to talk to you for a moment. Can you just take a moment, all of us right now, and sincerely, honestly, in your heart, can you just take a moment, literally like five, ten seconds, and think about this year. Just think about it. If you were honest with yourself, this is not for public hearing and public viewing and public, uh, you know, opinion and perspective. I'm not throwing you under the bus. This is not in a court of public opinion. It's just between you and God, just for a moment. If you could close your eyes for a few moments and tell yourself, how would you define, what would be your definition of 2020? Thank you. Thank you. I want to tell you something very unusual. When you are in the presence of God, it is not as important to be honest with God as it is important to be honest with yourself. Do you realize that God knows who we are, whether we are telling him or pretending to be a certain person? He knows who we are in reality, in truth. But it is when we are honest with ourselves, we start talking out of our heart. 
Because, as I always say, God will never bless who you pretend to be. But he will bless who you really are. God will always help you in a situation and a moment. God will work with you. <laughs> work with you where you're at, not where you pretend to be. Not who you pretend to be. So I want to encourage you, if you want prayers to be answered, be honest with yourselves. If you want God work with you, be honest with yourself. And that's why I say, when you are praying, remember, dig deep into your heart. Touch the very essence of who you are. Get out of the reality of you, the truth of you, the bare, naked nature, where you're at and who you are. What are the things like around you? So that's why I ask you, would you be honest with yourself? What is this year like, 2020? We heard some of the best answers. Honestly, I, could, I couldn't have hoped for better answers. Okay? You know, amazing. So many of us went through crazy trials. None of us expected. Like Sandra says, who expected that this would have happened? None of us did. It just came out. In fact, as a pastor, I, I, I can't help myself but smile at least a bit in this difficult situation that we're in as a nation. Smile in a sense that we thought as humanity, as people, we thought we've achieved new level. That technolo technological breakthrough, the innovations, where we were, I mean, we were like, you know, almost one nation, the whole world, one nation, one people. I mean, we're bridging so many things and we're like all on the same pace and, and we're reaching the peak level, crescendo, like we've never reached before. And we're bragging about our ability and we're going for the smart and the successful and the able and the powerful and the connected. And we are just talking about it like how we're helping one another. And the humanity is that good and suddenly pandemic happened. Pandemic that we've created and we've spread and we can't help ourselves and we're like, uh, and we can't even be responsible for the vaccine. I mean, we're like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it hurts. We don't know what to do with this. I, I, I don't know. And suddenly we realize, whoa, we are desperately in need of God. We are desperately in need of our creator. We're like, God, come and fix us. <laughs> come and help us. And yes, yes, as Ben says, this is truly a moment, an opportunity like never before. And you can't see it any other way. You know why? Because Christ lives in you. Amen? Am I preaching to church? Am I talking to church? Can I, can I just forget? By the way, the reason I wear a hoodie today, I, I've never wore a sweater, let me be official, a sweater with the hood. Never wore to church in my life. But this is symbolic because this is the type of year we had. You know what I'm saying? You just like, come on, put your ass together. Let's be honest with ourselves. This is not, it's like, listen, I just want to be comfortable. And at first I was like, I want to go places. But then as places were closing, you know, and I was confined to my own house and staring at my kids, you know. I mean, it's just getting more difficult. But what I'm trying to say is this is the year that has been. And then we kind of get used to it. So we're now, now it's going to be difficult for us to go to stores and buy anything serious, official. You know what I'm saying? We just love comfort. And man, these companies that sell comfort and lounging and stuff, they, they'll be prospering. They'll be like, yeah, this is the time. Let's go. Let's go. But I want to talk to you briefly before we go back to the hoodie. I want to talk to you out of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Famous passage, okay. We're going to read verse 12 but focus on 13. Here we go. 1 Corinthians, actually let's start 11. Paul says, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. So he's talking to the church. Remember, he's talking to the church. He's talking to you and I. He's talking to God's people. The Spirit of God lives in us. He says, we see things, reflection as in a mirror. And by the way, those mirrors at that day, he's, if you do history, the city of Corinth, which was the second most beautiful and biggest 
successful city in that whole area, okay, the south of Rome. And they were known for making mirrors. It's a historical data. But their mirrors were not even close to our mirrors. By the way, our mirrors are made out of glass, okay. Their mirrors were made out of copper. So they would do, they would buffer, they would polish copper to the degree so much that you will see reflection. But obviously, reflection in a copper doesn't matter how well it was buffered. And reflection in a mirror as we have it now, magnifying mirrors. My wife has the one that is like 10 times magnifying. I see myself and I'm just like, whoa. I walk by like the, uh, the mirror is mirror, you know, in vanity. And I'm just like walking around because I see everything. I'm just like, who is this ugly creature? Walk Anyway, and so I just go around as a 10 times magnifying. You know, I'm already scared just one time. But anyway, and so, but, but the copper wasn't. So he says, he says, we see the future. We see things as a reflection in that dual kind of mirror on a copper. And then he says, then we, then, then, when Jesus comes back, he says, then we will see, we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully. And he's talking in context of the Spirit of God moving and, and all the gifts. And he says, even as I am. Please, let's go next verse, please. Okay, verse 13. He says, and now these three remains. And now these three remains. Church, time out. Time out, everybody. Time out right here. I don't care what situation we're in. I don't care about our circumstances. This is it. This is about you and I. And now these three remain. This moment, whether you are on, on a peak, uh, top of the mountain, or you are in a valley of the shadow of death, these three will always remain. These three actually, they are part of who you are in Christ. Uh, these three are an ingredient of the followers of Christ. He says, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Faith. Hope and love. And I just want to briefly, really briefly talk about hope today. Because this is the end of the year. And we're about to start the beginning of the year. And you seem like, well, Pastor John, for the first time in history, it doesn't matter. Because the end of the year and the beginning of the new year feels like it's going to be the same. Nothing is changing. We can't even have fireworks. I mean, like, what could we have? Nothing. So 2021, well, how is it going to be different? What are we, what are we going to do? Like, well, okay, yay. Thursday night we'll be like, yay, we survive. Wake up Friday morning. Yes, it's Friday. Thanks, God. It's fr I'm still alive. Listen, as a follower of Christ, these three remains. These three remain. These three, watch this, faith. Faith has to do, are you ready for this? It's funny. With the past. In other words, Jesus died for you. And when you said, Lord Jesus, your death, your cross, your blood, your suffering, and your resurrection uh, was applied to my life, now I'm yours. So faith has to do. In fact, everything you pray for is based on the faith that happened in the past. Jesus died for you. Anything you pray for, you're like, I plead the blood of Jesus. And then he says, hope. Hope is a bridge. Hope is a bridge from the past to the future. But the future that you already are living is a future of love. You start here and you forever will love people. Because the Spirit of God lives in you. Faith, hope, and love. Okay. Faith, hope, and love. What is hope? What is that bridge we're talking about? What is that hope, especially in a 2020, end of 2020, when we feel like, well, we have, pan we have kind of vaccine and this panacea, I don't even know if it's for everyone. I mean, we're not that excited about it in the first place. We don't want our faith to be crooked some kind of way. I, mean, I don't know. Like, we don't know what to do with it, if it's going to work. We kind of want people to be vaccinated so they stop talking, but maybe not us. You know what I'm saying? Or someone was like, like give it to me. I, I have a friend who says, Shoot in my eye right here. Wow, awesome. You know, it's like give it to me. I just want to be over. I just want places to be open. I want to take my kids. I want to, I want to be free. I want to jump in my car. I want to drive. I want to go to work. I want to make money. Pastor John, I want that hope. 
I want that hope in the midst of a challenging, tough season in our nation. I want that hope. What is the hope like? What is that hope like? What is that hope like? Friends, according to the author of Hebrews, hope is a person. Hope is not just an idea. It's not just a perspective. Hope is a person. And author of Hebrews 11 times talks about Jesus as our hope. In other words, what happened to Jesus? The way Jesus lived, the way Jesus took the suffering, the beating for us, and the way Jesus died, and the way Jesus rose from the dead, we hope that it is exactly what will happen to us. Every, I mean, nothing but the resurrection. We don't want the suffering? Of course not. Absolutely not. No suffering, please. He already suffered for us. Yes, please. But the resurrection, so our hope is in Jesus. Our hope is Jesus. Our hope is that yes, because he rose from the dead, what he promised us will actually take place. It will happen. It will happen. His words are yes and amen. Because all the prophecies about him were fulfilled in him. And everything he promised has happened so far. So guess what? It will happen again. I will be with God forever. Come on, God is good, amen? amen? I will be with God forever. In fact, I don't have time today, but if you ever, if you're following or taking notes, just for fun, you actually look in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, and you look at verse 20, that even creation around us that was doomed and it is frustrated because of the sin of humanity is hoping, verse 20, is hoping that when we are stepping in who we supposed to be, children of God, creation will be breathing freely. It will actually exist as it was intended by God. So creation is hoping for the revelation of God's children. And then verse 24 and 25, we don't have time for it today, says that we as children of God, we are hoping to step up into a new lifestyle. That is when the Spirit of God is fully working in our lives. And it's so incredible. It's so powerful. It's so powerful. But I want to take you just briefly for a moment. Can we go to um, Romans chapter 15? Watch this. Romans chapter 15. I want to show you quickly. Romans 15. Watch what Paul says now to the church in Rome. He says, such things were written in the Scripture long ago to teach us. And the Scriptures, everybody say the Scriptures. Can you say one more time the scriptures? All right, look at me everybody. And the scriptures give us hope. Look, if you're watching news all the time, you will be devastated. You will be hopeless and potentially helpless. You feel like, I don't know, I, I just can't, I, you know. But the scriptures give us hope. But the scriptures give us hope. I don't know how you can go through the day without waking up in the morning and say, Lord, speak to me. Open his word. Speak to me. How can you go through the day without God speaking to you? God who made you. God who put you together. God who's sustaining you, keeping you alive, covering you. God who gave you Jesus. God who placed spirit of God in your life. Same God says, hey, hey, I also want you to have an attitude of hope. And how is it going to happen? Scriptures. Through the scripture. You know, every single day, my wife and I, we talk about things around us. Things in the world. We talk about things that happen in the house. Our teenager boys, you know, they, they hang out with friends and spend time together. Um, our three kids are still in school. In person, thank God. In person, yes. I don't know what's your opinion about it. Frankly, I don't care. You know, I'm just happy they're out of the house, you know. Can't get rid of the, can't get rid of the fourth one. He's still in the house because in the public school, bless him, okay. And hopefully they'll open up all the schools, okay. But what I'm trying to say right now is, as we're talking to them <clears throat> every day and they bring all kinds of experiences and thoughts and perspective, talking to their friends and, you know, connecting with their uh, uh, friends and families and they bring to the table and we discuss about things. And I can't tell you enough, look at me, I'm just being very honest with you right now. I can't tell you enough 
how incredibly powerful, how incredibly amazing it is. Incredibly amazing. I mean, what a simple word that we use this everywhere. Amazing, incredible. But it is incredibly amazing to know that God is real. That the word of God is yes and amen. And just to open the scripture and say, well, this is what the truth is like. This is what the scripture is promising us. This is the reality. And I can't tell you how often, whether we watch a movie, a documentary, whatever we watch with kids or with our wives, you know, husbands, some of us gathering together and just talking. I can't tell you now how refreshing it is going back to the truth. To know that this is our position. This is who we are in Christ. This is what God is doing. This is what God is talking about. What he's promising us. Scripture gives us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently for God's promises to be fulfilled. Friends, God's promises are not just about eternity. God's promises are about you. It's about me. It's about us. It's about today. It's about your life. It's about your life, it's about your relationships, it's about your ministry, it's about your children, it's about your work, it's about your potential. God's promises are everywhere for you. And they will be fulfilled if you say, Lord, I'm going to trust you, I'm going to walk with you, I'm going to live with you, and I'm going to bridge from my faith to the lifestyle, which is love. I'm going to bridge over, I'm going to have an attitude of hope. Attitude of hope, hope, Greek word elpis, is an active type of lifestyle. Active. Hope means you're praying. Hope means you're declaring. Hope means you're standing firm on the truth. Hope means you say, God, I might not see it, but it's there. Last night, late last night, my wife showed me a small clip. She was watching um, a couple, Nick and, and uh, uh, Christine Kane and... Um, they were telling a story how this few days ago or something like that, I just watched for a couple of minutes, you know, they, they live in Orange County, California, and they go um, the Bay Area there or whatnot, and, and, uh, and they always kind of look up, there is a small island, and they love it because it, it looks so good. But the other day, they went there, and uh, it was really cloudy, um, and, you know, and, and so they go there, and Christine says, I'm looking, and I'm looking for the island, and I see nothing. The fog, the clouds, just so low covering it. I see nothing. So she says, I turned to my husband, Nick, and I said, Nick, I, I, I'm losing my mind. Where's, the, where, where's my favorite island? And, and, and her husband says, Christine, it's still there. It's still there. She said, what do you mean? It's still there. It's just fog. You might not see it, but it's there. And sometimes our circumstances are so heavy thick that we see nothing we're like all i see is troubles all i see is just hopelessness everybody's complaining and the more people complain the more you watch the news the more you see gloom and doom the more you're like oh, oh, oh. i don't know is it like your face is down no hope no faith no joy certainly no joy so you feel like, I, I, I just, I, I don't know, well, whatever. How about going back to scripture? How about believing that God is still there? How about praying when you don't feel God? How about praying, say, God, I know that you are. I can tell you, and I know you heard this, and my wife will slap me after the service, and it's fine, I deserve it. But what I'm saying is, she, she says, please don't tell the church about me being sick, because I'm sick and tired of it. Please don't feel sorry for her so she doesn't tell me that over, okay? But this is our reality. But every day as we pray together, I say, God, I don't see you in Vita's body, but I know you're there. Every single day, oh, well, no, every 10 times a day, same thing. And I teach myself, I train myself never to pray a religious prayer. I always pray as if I'm praying for the first time, I promise you. I'm praying like I'm ready. I'm screaming, shouting, walking around, anointing her, declaring, pulling all kinds of scripts. I mean, I just go for it with all my heart. I don't see it yet. And I tell her, I said, please don't be religious. Don't exaggerate. Don't lie to me. If you don't feel well, just tell me. Share with me. Don't cry all by yourself. You know, she cries, I eat. But it's, it's just the way, you know, coping mechanism. I'm joking. John is like, what is this? You know. But 
I said, Lord, I know you're there. I refuse to live without hope. I refuse to live without hope. I am not going down at all. I'm not saying I'm not going down without fight. I'm just not going down, period. Be, I am not go, I'm telling you. So I want to encourage you right now. You are not going to die. And you are not going to suffer to the degree that you are destroyed. That everything is just falling apart in your life. I'm going to tell you, I don't care what your year was like. God is good. God is real. God loves you. God is gathering us together. This is just the beginning. And I'm going to keep that in my CG because I agree with him in my connect room. It is a time. It is an opportunity. It is a season and a time of opportunity. God needs to shine through you and through me. Amen. All right. Let's go to the last point I want to make. Just a random point. This is uh, Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Watch this. Okay, let's start with uh, verse 3. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. Oh, Paul, please don't say that. We can rejoice. No, I don't want to rejoice. When we run into problems and trials. For we know that they help us develop endurance. Oof. Endurance? Like we've been enduring for nine plus months. How about stop enduring? All right. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident Hope of salvation. Character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. This hope will not lead to disappointment. Now, very briefly, just very briefly, I'm going to tell you this. My grandmother, who graduated to be with Jesus when she was 94. You know, I think I told you this before. But I remember as I went to seminary and university, I, I remember coming home and I said, one day I was like studying psychology, I said, Grandma, I said, were you ever um, depressed during World War II? She says, what, what did you say? I said, Grandma, honestly, I sat down, I wanted to like interview her, I want to write down, I want to, you know, experience. I said, were you ever depressed in World War II? During World War II, she says, what's that? I said, you, you don't know what depression is? She's like, oh, I heard about it. She's like, what's that? I said, what do you mean? And she said, were you ever depressed? She's like, why? Why would you be depressed? I said, what do you mean? Why? I mean, life is tough. You see friends killed left and right. You see your father being sent to war and it's you and your mom. There's no one around. Things have been taken away from you. Hiding people in your, in your basement so no one would kill them. And I, I mean, I can tell you stories. And she says, why would you be depressed? She says, God has always been good. I said, have you ever been hungry? She's like, oh, yeah, for months. I said, and she's like, God has always been good. I was like, wow. Have you ever cried? She says, don't stop. Have you been depressed? No. Why? I said, so why would you be crying if you were not depressed? She's like, yeah, it was painful. But I always had hope. And I always believed. And I said, well, so how, how has it happened? She says, listen to this. I mean, this is crazy. I, was, I, I, I almost fainted. I was 17. I was like, this makes no sense. She says, when it happens for four to five years, you just develop character. <laughs> and I said, how could you? Yes. Four and a half, almost five years of war in her area constantly. My grandfather, her husband, Walking five and a half thousand kilometers, walking four and a half years. And he said, she says, it's just a character. And grandpa's like, absolutely, it's just a part of life. It develops character. And, and she says, you never lose your hope. I said, why? She says, because the spirit of God lives in you. And I didn't understand until I saw the scripture. Because watch this. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how... Do we have a second page? Basically, Paul is saying in verse 5, which is the second, second part of it. Guys, we'll make it ready in a second. That the Spirit of God poured the love of God in our heart. Okay? The Spirit of God will pour the love of God in our heart. So we know that God is present in our life. You know why? 
because we know that he loves us. God, how can you love me in the middle of trials? How can, me, how can you love me in the middle of war? He loves you. You don't understand your circumstances, but he loves you. You don't understand your situation, he loves you. And it is up to you, the attitude that you will have, whether you choose to say, God, I'm going to trust you. I don't understand the season I'm in, but I'm going to hold on to you. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to make one last statement. Friends, watch this. This is what we, we love hoodies, a sweater with a hood. We love hoodies, comfortable. It's good for us. And we are so lazy now that straight from my bed to a store just to get fresh air or whatever. No brushing teeth, unfortunately, because you're wearing masks. Nobody can, you know, no washing face, especially no hair. You just do all this and run. Your car, you have a mask and nobody knows who's who. You don't even talk to people. You run into the store, you get stuff done. And it develops, watch this, it develops an attitude of laziness. Listen, God does not need your help to deliver you and to give you breakthrough. But God wants you to be his partner in your growth. So maybe take off your laziness and say, you know what, God, in this moment, I actually want to be your partner. Because this season... While it's the season I don't understand, and the 2020 has been a crazy year, one thing I know for sure, I don't want to be just delivered. But because the 2021 is coming, and it's not just about the number, it's about a new season. When the new season has come, and I still have the old attitude, what will happen? What will happen to you and I? What will happen to our families? What will happen to our ministry? You know what? I want to be ready. I want to be right. I want to see an opportunity. I want to see it. I want to seize it. I want to jump in it. I want to say, let's go. And it all depends on my growth. Because this setback can take you so far back, then 2021 will come, 2022 will come, and you still a sloth. You know, lazy walking around say, oh man, I'll write a book about it one day. It was a tough year. And you can be a victim, or you can say, Lord, I'm going to grow. I'm going to grow. Straight out, we're paying $40,000 a month for this building. And we said, yes, bring it. You know why? Because God will provide. We're going to talk about it starting next Sunday. The whole new series. God will provide. God has already showing us magnificently, miraculously, gloriously. He will provide. But I don't want God just to drop things at us. I want to grow. Look at me. I want to grow. Listen, it is the character. Endurance develops strength of character. And then out of character, there's a hope. It's a steady hope. It's not like somebody gave me something. Oh, okay. There's a bit of light. There's a bit of a happy moment. Maybe things will change. Things are turning around. No, it's the character. It's a lifestyle. Church, this morning, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge your psyche. I want to challenge your mindset. I want to challenge your perspective. I want to challenge the way you think to the core of who you are. Faith has to do with your mindset. You have to make decision to trust the word of God. You have to make decision to believe the promise of God. But hope is an attitude. If faith is a mindset that you have to renew your thinking all the time, <laughs> Faith is a mindset. Hope is an attitude. Love is a lifestyle. But I want to just challenge you right now. Come on. In this season, I want to challenge you to grow. I want to challenge you and I to grow. Please say, God, take my hand. I want to partner with you. God wants to really take you on a journey where you're growing. Because watch, the stage is turning. Watch, the stage is turning. It is turning in your life, in your relationship. It is turning in your financial situation. It is turning in your ministry. And I'm going to ask you, are you ready? Come on, let me remind you a cliche statement. Don't just go through it, grow through it. Come on. This is your season. Position yourself with a mindset that God, let's go. What are you growing in me, Lord? How are you growing me? What are you changing in me? I want to change 
I want to be like Jesus. I want to think like Jesus. I want to be a person who lives in the truth, who brings the truth, who declares the truth. I want to position myself being founded in the Word of God, declaring the truth to whoever is around me and more importantly declaring the truth over my life. I want, I want you just to close your eyes. Don't let me pray for you. I want you to pray. Just close your eyes, please. Can you just talk to God? Can you just start talking to God right now? Just say, God, I want to grow. I want to grow with you. God, you don't need to grow, but I do. And I want to grow with you. With you by my side. <laughs> with you being present in my life. Would you be my teacher? Would you be my mentor? Would you be my guidance? Would you be my leader? Would you be my shepherd? Would you be my pastor? Would you be my friend? Would you be my father? I want to grow with you. Lord, I'm tired of complaining about things. I'm tired of throwing out left and right, my opinion and my judgment. <laughs> I'm tired of labeling things. It doesn't help me. I want to grow. I want to grow my character. I want to be steady. I want to be strong. I want to be level-headed in the truth. I want to be balanced as far as my perspective of your word. I don't want to live in fear. I don't want to be petrified of what's coming next. I don't want to allow the devil to keep me in my own room, in my own house. And turning my house into a zone where I feel uncomfortable, lonely, confined to my own thoughts. I want to grow. Open my perspective. Open my eyes. Let me see the way you want me to see. Give me a vision. Even a glimpse of where you're taking me. The way you're changing me. God. God, I pray that in this season, I am a person of hope. In this season, I'm a mature person. I'm a follower of Christ. In this season, I'm being formed. I'm being prepared. I want to see when you're shifting things in my life. I want to partner with you. I want to work with you. I want to recognize every moment where you are moving. <laughs> every moment where you are transforming things in my life. I want to be positioned that I can see the way you want me to see. Jesus, I will not let a situation around me define my season and define who I am. I'm going to be putting my faith in you. I know that my hope will never let me down because you are real, you're alive, because you are tangible, personable. <laughs> you are mighty, powerful, evident, strong. Jesus, I want to see you. Every day of my life. <laughs> Father, I thank you for every person, every family right now. And I declare that we're people of hope. And I declare that we are people of your pasture, your 
church, your kingdom, with your mindset. Father, I thank you that your grace is sufficient in our life. I thank you that, yes, there's a new dawn in my life and a new season is coming where I'm partnering with you. <laughs> I'm walking with you and I'm growing with you. In Jesus' name, this is my prayer. And everybody says, come on, come on, stand up on your feet. Come on, stand up on your feet. Come on, let's worship the Lord. Come on, stand up on your feet for a moment. Let's go. You don't leave me broken hearted. You never break your promises. You keep giving second chances. Far above what I deserve. And you keep telling me I'm worth it. Out of love, I have to earn. You don't leave me where you found me. You pull me up. want to say thank you that you were there you were present you were with us you were holding our hand whether we felt it or not you were there just like the island that was covered in fog and sometimes we didn't see what's going on you were present you're still there and we thank you we thank you for your presence we thank you for your provision we thank you for who you are. And the church said, amen. Amen. Come on, give God a shout of praise. Would you just take a seat for one more minute? I promise you I'm going to release you uh, really soon. So I want to tell you that those of you that are not part of the small groups, our small groups are going to be restarting in January. But just, uh, just so you can go ahead of time, go ahead and text to... Uh, 77977 right there. I'm so sorry. That's for the 77948. Thank you, Margarita. Go ahead and text if you're looking to find a group. Um, we're going to help you get plugged in and find a great group for you. Um, and if you need a prayer, right over in the left corner, we would love to pray for you. Do not go home with the same burden you came here. We would love to stand together. We would love to pray. God is God of miracles. He's God of supernatural. Amen. And that's what we stand here and believe. Amen. All right. With that being said, enjoy the rest of your day. Get some food and, and um, hang out with some people.